in this video i will discuss the ethmoid bone in detail this green is the ethmoid bone ethmoid bone is an unpaired cranial bone located between the two bony orbits as you can see now let me isolate the ethmoid bone for you this is the ethmoid bone with the interior view this is the lateral view of the ethmoid bone the posterior view of the ethmoid bone the superior view of the ethmoid bone and the inferior view of the ethmoid bone now before going into the detailed discussion of the ethmoid bone you should know few things about the ethmoid bone the ethmoid bone has contribution in the interior cranial fossa the orbital cavity and also in the nasal cavity in its contribution to the interior cranial fossa the ethmoid bone forms the floor of the interior cranial fossa in the orbital cavity it has contribution in forming the medial wall of the orbital cavity while in the nasal cavity it has contribution in making the nasal septum and the lateral wall of the nasal cavity we will discuss each of these in detail as we move forward the simple and easy way to understand the ethmoid bone is to divide it into two parts one is the median vertical plate and the other one is the left and right labyrinth the median vertical plate include the crista galli the cribriform plate and the perpendicular plate while the left and right labyrinth include the medial wall the ethmoidal air sinuses and the lateral wall this is the median vertical plate and as we discussed it consists of three parts the crista galli the cribriform plate and the perpendicular plate this is the crista galli crista galli is a thick midline smooth triangular process arising from the superior surface of the ethmoid bone into the interior cranial fossa in this model this is the crista galli the crista galli separate the two olfactory bulbs as you can see in this diagram this is one olfactory bulb and there is another olfactory bulb over here which is missing in this diagram and between these two olfactory bulb lies the crista galli and to the crista galli is attached the fox cerebri this is the crista galli and this is the fox cerebri attached to the crista galli next is the cribriform plate cribriform plate is the plate that is separating the crista galli from the perpendicular plate the cribriform plate has many pores in it that allow the passage of the olfactory nerve through the cribriform plate the left and right labyrinth are attached to the median vertical plate the cribriform plate is attached laterally to the orbital plate of the frontal bone in this model this is the cribriform plate and over the cribriform plate the olfactory bulb is present and as you can see through the pores of the cribriform plate the fibers of the olfactory nerve passes there is also two most clinical importance of the cribriform plate in head injury if the cribriform plate get ruptured the patient will experience two thing one is the csf rhinorrhea that is from the anterior cranial fossa the csf will leak into the nasal cavity and the second one is the loss of smell sensation this is due to damage to the olfactory nerve the second clinical importance of the cribriform plate is that the amoeba such as the neglaria passes through the cribriform plate and then infect the brain the third part of the median vertical plate is the perpendicular plate the perpendicular plate has contribution in making the nasal septum separating the right and left airways of the nasal cavity the other bone that has contribution in making the nasal septum is the vomer bone the perpendicular plate extends from the inferior border of the cribriform plate the perpendicular plate is attached interiorly with the spine of the frontal bone and the crest of the nasal bone inferiorly it is attached to the septal cartilage posteroinferiorly it is attached to the vomer bone 
and posteriorly it is attached to the sphenoid bone. Now we move to the labyrinth. There are two labyrinth that is left and right labyrinth. These two labyrinth are connected with each other through the cribriform plate of the median vertical plate. Here we will take one labyrinth as a representative. The labyrinth has the lateral wall, the medial wall and in between the lateral and the medial wall is present the ethmoidal sinuses also called as the ethmoidal air cells. We will discuss the ethmoidal air sinuses with other sinuses of the cranial bone in a separate video. This is the lateral wall of the labyrinth of the ethmoid bone. The lateral wall of the labyrinth is smooth in nature and it has contribution in making the medial wall of the orbit of the eye. As you can see this is the orbit of the eye and this is the lateral wall of the labyrinth of the ethmoid bone that has contribution in making the medial wall of the orbit. The ethmoidal air sinuses. The ethmoidal air sinuses is present between the lateral and the medial wall of the labyrinth of the ethmoid bone and these are three in number the interior, middle and posterior ethmoidal air sinuses. In each labyrinth the three ethmoidal air sinuses that is the interior, middle and posterior ethmoidal air sinuses are present. So a total of six ethmoidal air sinuses is present in the ethmoid bone. Now we came to the medial wall of the labyrinth of the ethmoid bone. We will discuss the medial wall in detail. The medial wall of the labyrinth of the ethmoid bone forms the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. And also in the medial wall of the ethmoid bone there is two bony projection. These are called the superior nasal concha and the middle nasal concha. Now let's look at the lateral wall of the nasal cavity and remove the nasal concha to have look at the structures underneath it. These structures are difficult to understand on the ethmoid bone alone. So we are looking at the lateral wall of the nasal cavity to better understand it. Now in the lateral wall of the nasal cavity there are these seven structures that you see. And these structures are present on the ethmoid bone. First is the sphenoethmoidal recess. This is the sphenoethmoidal recess lying posterior and superior to the superior nasal concha. Number 2. The superior meatus. The space between the superior nasal concha and the middle nasal concha is called the superior meatus. It is the smallest of the three meatuses. Number 3. The middle meatus. The space between the middle nasal concha and the inferior nasal concha is the middle meatus. And this meatus is of medium size. Number 4 is the inferior meatus. The space between the inferior nasal concha and the floor of the nasal cavity is the inferior meatus and it is the largest of all the three meatuses. Number 5 is the ethmoidal bulla. Ethmoidal bulla is close to the middle nasal concha. This bulla is the ethmoidal bulla. Number 6. Hiatus simulunaris. This crescent shaped groove is the hiatus simulunaris. Number 7. The uncinate process. This convex interior margin is the uncinate process. Now after seeing this you can understand this structure on the bones. Now this is the ethmoid bone, this is the ethmoidal bulla, hiatus simulunaris, uncinate process, the superior nasal concha, the middle nasal concha, sphenoethmoidal recess, superior meatus, middle meatus, this is all about the ethmoid bone. Thank you.